Kenneth Clegg. I was born in Valley Junction, Iowa, July 12, 1918, nine days before my dad left for World War One. 1929, my parents decided they was going to make a living raising chickens in southern Missouri. They got hit with a drought and the economy collapsed. It made you appreciate every little thing you had that depression did. <laughs> we lived on chicken and fish <laughs> for two and a half years. And I graduated from Valley Junction High School in January 1937. I registered for the draft in October of 1940. I knew when ships bombed Pearl Harbor that it wasn't going to be long. <laughs> we went up to Minnesota to my sister's place for Christmas. While we were up there, they, I got a letter that was forwarded from the draft board, and I reported, I think uh, it was January, 1942, I was sent to San Luis Obispo, California, Camp San Luis. They, when they passed out the, the weapons, they, every 11th man got a BAR, Browning Automatic Rifle, weighed uh, about 17 pounds with a, with a bipod. And I carried that thing all over the hills of San Luis Obispo. I had a tag on it that says, Runaway Gun. And uh, I says, this thing been fixed? He says, oh yeah, they all been fixed. So I put a magazine, 20 rounds in it offhand. I was gonna shoot three or four rounds and <laughs> I let go of the trigger and it wouldn't stop. <laughs> and the thing wound up like that. I was glad it did, didn't have more ammunition. I'd have probably shot myself. I was attached to the 32nd Infantry. They split our company up into groups that would be with di different outfits, preparing me to be an automotive mechanic or trucks and jeeps and weapons carriers and that sort of thing. I got with a with a heavy weapons company. We got our orders 15th of April, 1942, we, we sailed. And I remember going under the Golden Gate Bridge. I thought, boy, I wonder if I ever see that again, you know. We went to Attu for the invasion there. It was in two parts. One part was at Holtz Bay, that's on the kind of the northeast side of the, of the island, and the Massacre Bay, where I went up shore, was on the east. It, there wasn't much of a beach there, and the only vehicles that, that went ashore were, were tracked vehicles, so they could go on that tundra. I was sure glad I got out of the infantry when we went there because I think that that was the toughest operation in the Pacific. Then we went to Kwajalein in the Marshall Islands. The first step was taking a, one of the smaller islands to get the, our artillery so we'd had land-based artillery for close-in fire support. Japs were all in blockhouses, pillboxes, that sort of thing, and uh, they had the infantry had to root them out. When we left, they didn't tell us where we were going, but I landed at Dulog on Leyte, and sitting there on the trail of that gun, smoking a cigarette, and they were busy unloading on the beach, and they had lights on, and and there was an ammunition dump in the middle of the, all the supplies. I heard this airplane, I looked up, and there was a moon there, and it just happened that that airplane went right between the moon and the end. When I could see it was a twin engine. I said to my buddy, I says, we ain't got any twin engines flying around down here. I says, I want to get in a foxhole. And about that time, boy, I heard that screaming noise of this bomb, and, and I dove in that box hole, and, and that bomb went off, 
And I opened my eyes and it was, it was in the blast area. It was red everywhere. Lady was a, wasn't an overnight operation. That went from the October 20th until mid-March. Got on a LST and the whole convoy was LSTs. <laughs> and we're heading for Okinawa. The landing took place early morning, it's seven, eight o'clock, something like that, and I went ashore. We uh, got hung up on the beach. There were about three or four LSTs in a row stuck on that coral, and uh, here come four Zap airplanes, and this one that was closest to me, uh, he he dove and dropped, and I could see when he let the bomb go off of the airplane. And it hit in the coral probably, I'd say 30, 40 yards from where I was. And I heard it hit, and it bounced up in the air, and I the only protection on that was underneath my truck. And I could, I'd seen it bounce up, and I thought, boy, if that thing goes off, it didn't or I wouldn't be here. I was there from the Easter, April 1st, till after the war was ended. Anyhow, made it home in one piece, and uh, I'd uh, hate to go through it again, but there's just some good memories, and a lot of them that not so good.